नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स दिस इज एन जे ये होस्ट ऑन दिस चैनल इन दिस वीडियो वी विल हैव अवर डिस्कशन ऑन सम सॉर्ट ऑफ अलाइनमेंट्स इन नेटल चार्ट व्हिच कैन मेक योर चार्ट लिटिल बिट वीक और कुड मेक यू वनरेबल सो नाउ गाइस व्हेन आई से दैट हियर आई एम नॉट ओनली फोकसिंग अबाउट दैट इफ योर असेंडेंट लॉर्ड इज गोइंग टू बी वीक और योर 10th हाउस लॉर्ड इज गोइंग टू बी वीक हियर आई विल बी जस्ट फोकसिंग ऑन द कोर foundation of your natal chart which somehow is attached with your moon so like the way lately you must have been seeing this um like emphasis in my content that i'm focusing more on the panchang because guys even at a time when i started my journey on astrology and all i was more inclined towards the psychological aspect of the planets but lately when ever since i came back to india i'm meeting lot many fellow astrologer friends and getting access to lot many classical books and all and over there i'm getting the answer of that that a lot many times when we get to know that okay this person is running the time period of an exalted planet and whatsoever that person in that given point of time is trying to achieve dasha is supporting that but even after that why events are not getting triggered up so over there i just got this idea that okay the core foundation of your chart stands your chart stands on the pedestal on the pillars of certain elements which needs to be scrutinized first otherwise you are going to have problems in major areas of your life so yes guys uh, there is no such thing called good or bad it all comes down to how you are utilizing the energies of your planets i um, still remember like <laughs> Uh, when i just started my journey with astrology there was one time when my friend um, like um, there was one um, match making kind of place so my friend was going there to register himself a typical indian arranged marriage thing and he just took me with him that okay why shall i pay extra money for the services of astrological match making that thing you can do on my behalf when i went there my friend was there talking to that person in the reception and when that guy uh, quoted him that okay for the astrological services these are the charges so my friend told him that no i brought an astrologer with me so then this guy asked him who you are talking about he pointed at me and he was looking behind me i was wearing those red pants floral hawaii shirt and he was not expecting me to be an astrologer so definitely i have had my own experiences when it comes down to astrology but over here i will be giving you what is coming straight out of the classical text and uh, there's one author whom i strongly uh, want to recommend people uh, suresh chandra mishra his books are actually very exemplary if you actually want to get the gist of the classical text specifically when we talk about the yogas uh which are connected with the panchang which we'll be discussing today so guys uh the very first slide uh what makes an astrological chart weak and struggle prone so the first point which i want to present is debilitated sun so if you are born at a time when uh, because sun gets debilitated in the libra so guys in the original kal purush kundli as well um, there are like certain balancing points in the uh, cosmos so in this way you can also see a uh, libra or the the degrees over which sun gets into deepest of its debilitation it is somehow the mid juncture of the chart as well so um, had it been the debilitation of some other planet it could have been different case but this is a region where sun which in itself represents your soul your body vitality is going to get debilitated so in itself uh, sun getting debilitated and over there there could be certain relief points for you the exceptions are so let's say for example if um, your sun is debilitated but it is vargottam and it is not of zero degree this could be a, a saving grace for the person uh, if your birth time is close to the time of diwali which we celebrate around the close to that time so this could be a saving grace for you if the um, debilitation of the sun is getting cancelled like in a way like um, sun is getting debilitated in the uh, libra and uh, the lord of that which is the uh, planet venus venus is exalted or uh, saturn is also conjunct with the same debilitated uh, sun as well so they like certain alignments so if that is those eligibilities are getting fulfilled then we can say this thing that yes uh, we do not have to worry too much uh, after that and lastly guys if there are formation of some auspicious yogas 
लाइक द्वी पुष्कर त्रि पुष्कर और रवि योग एट द टाइम ऑफ द बर्थ सो इट इज वेरी सिंपल द्वि पुष्कर मीन्स टू सो लाइक द वे वी नो दिस थिंग दैट दे लाइक प्लैनेट्स हुज नक्षत्रास फुल्ली डिसाइड इन द जोडिक साइन बट द नक्षत्र रूल बाय द प्लैनेट मार्स विच आर मृक्षिरा चित्रा धनिष्ठा टू पदार्स फॉल इन वन साइन एंड टू पदार्स फॉल इन एन इधर साइन सो द्वि पुष्कर योगा कैन ओनली बी फुलफिल्ड बाय द नक्षत्र ऑफ द प्लैनेट मार्स वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द त्रि पुष्कर योगा इट्स थ्री सो इट्स ओनली द नक्षत्र ऑफ द सन एंड द जुपिटर वेर द पोर्शन फॉल्स लाइक दिस Three padas are going to be in one zodiac sign, and one pada is going to be another zodiac sign. So the nakshatra ruled by the planet uh, Sun are the uh, Kritika, uh, Uttara Falguni, and the uh, Uttara Shada. And the uh, nakshatras ruled by the planet Jupiter are the Punarvasu, Vishakha, Purbhadra pada. So if someone is born at a time when uh, the war, the weekday, is either Sunday, Tuesday, or uh, like Saturday. and tithi is second seventh or this is a uh, 12th tithi and uh, any of these nakshatras which i mentioned then this could be a saving grace so yes guys after that the next slide which i have prepared is if someone is born at a time of the krishna chaturdashi now what does it mean so again guys uh, when we talk about a uh, specifically krishna paksh chaturdashi which means when your moon is waning and it is very close to the time of the new moon so um, generally the results which have been found in the life of someone who is born at a time of the krishna chaturdashi is a uh, native gets less respect from family members or in laws and could have a difficult matrimonial life after that what could be the next point which can make the chart little bit weak or sensitive that is if someone is born close to the time of the amavasya of the new moon so again guys new moon birth is not considered as very auspicious so the results which i have like the features which i have written over here affliction start from a uh, waning 14th day uh, peaks at new moon amavasya and starts fading away till second day of waxing moon means the weakness of the moon tend to remain close to the time of the um, like the when the moon will start waxing like uh, the shukla paksh uh, dvitiya tithi again guys now in certain cases the weak moon also forms the raj yoga as well so if you are a aries lagna person and for the aries lagna people if moon is going to be weak then it actually forms the raj yoga as well so in astrology there like lot many uh, combinations permutation combination but in short amavasya birth makes the kundali overall chart little bit weak in so many ways like the natest personality could be uh, here i'm not even talking about planets i'm only talking about your moon so personality could be uh, prone towards stress depression native will not be able to exert or manifest or uh, kind of exert himself at the right times he just always within the mind within the head and along with that guys when we talk about um, remaining very much vulnerable towards negative entities toxic influence uh, third power related problems bothering you all those tendency remain strong for those people who have their birth close to the amavasya new moon so characteristics uh, diseases depression less return on the hard work which you do professional ups and downs and native could be true introvert or might have a hesitant personality now guys the point number 4 there is nothing good in this world so if i said all these things for the amavasya or new moon so even the purnima or the full moon people are also not safe now guys uh, things are a little bit different over here see we cannot even overlook this fact that majority of the enlightened saints are born uh close to the time of the full moon so full moon could be very good like even a uh, new moon could be very good for the spiritual elevation but all these of the tithis are not considered as very good um there is a word in hindi we call as the vyavharik gyan we call it the worldly dealing worldly knowledge so native might lack over there so um native could be extremely emotional and creative not very practical in the worldly dealings uh, now guys the next point is waning 
and waxing moon um, like eighth day of that so shukla and krishna paksh ashtami so again guys uh, when we talk about any of those are uh, knots you will get to know that whenever sun and moon in correlation are somehow crossing the sensitive points and if someone is born right at that time that is generally considered as little bit weak i guess uh, donald trump uh, is also born close to the time of it was either eclipse like obviously uh, solar eclipse can only happen in um, uh, in a new moon and the lunar eclipse can only happen in the full moon so i guess he was born full moon and it was very close to the eclipse time as well so yes those people tend to remain exceptional now this could be exceptionally uh, exceptional suffering doing something uh, very bad or doing something exceptionally good for the society so the it remains a double edged sword but yes guys um, uh, shukla paksh or krishna paksh means either waxing or waning moon i am here only talking about from the side real calculation point of view ashtami birth is considered as equally sensitive as new moon or full moon now guys let me talk about the next point that is of the sankranti so the day on which sun changes sign tend to remain bit sensitive especially uh, 6.5 hours before and after the actual time of sun's transit so sankranti tend to remain a very sensitive time sankranti simply in english can be translated as the day the time and the hour minute second when sun is transiting from one sign to another here i'm not even talking about the gandanta and all if sun is transiting and right at that point of time like 6.5 hours before or after if a child is born that is also somewhat considered as kind of a fatalistic karmic way of free will tend to remain very less uh, now guys next is um, now here you will get to know the importance of all the limbs of the panchang so it's just like that like all those people who just only want to follow uh, just the they want to follow the vedic astrology they take interest in nakshatra but they leave aside the weekday tithi or yog uh, karan and all then it is like you know for example you are trying to make a recipe so uh, i've been with filipinos a lot so there's a dish uh, which one of my filipino friends she cooked for me kare kare so you make that peanut sauce from filipino cuisine you take some thai red curry from the malaysian cuisine you take some uh, barbecue sauce from some cuisine um, some uh, chutney from the uh, southern india dosa and all you mix everything you just going to create a mess so what i'm saying over here is that follow one science exclusively and take the complete extract out of it i'm very much sure if i'll ask 10 people in the comment section uh, randomly what is your moon sign what is your ascendant what is your nakshatra they all will be knowing about it but if i am going to ask them okay in which tithi day you were born on which week day or this could be on which yog or karan they might not have an answer to that so if you want to follow vedic astrology follow it comprehensively so yes guys um, bhadra so uh, another name for the vishti karan so uh, if someone is born at a time when bhadra is on so uh, task of native born under this karan uh, gets materialized after a lot of struggle with diminished success gets blame irrespective of doing righteous deeds uh, it's the knot or joint after every 3.5 tithis uh, moving ahead guys now is the our favorite gand moon so we all know this thing that um, the juncture between the water zodiac sign and the fire zodiac sign so even the nakshatra which falls over there which are the nakshatras of the ketu and the mercury so ketu nakshatras are uh, ashwini magh mula mercury nakshatras are uh, ashlesha jeshtha revati so now guys over here like what has been written in the uh, our scriptures is that uh, it has to be very close to that degree so for example um extreme results only come if they are at or ahead of 29 degrees 30 minutes of the water sign and um or until 1 degree of aries leo sagittarius then the energy of the gand mool is going to be very strong but let's say for example um you are like you have got a like revati nakshatra 
but it is not in the like uh, close to the 29 degree it is like 24 degree 23 degree then the impact is not going to be that strong same way you have got a uh, magh nakshatra but it is of the uh, 6 degree 8 degree 9 degree then the impact is not going to be that strong uh, and yes guys uh, same to an extent uh, applies on the lagan as well so it's not only that your uh, janam tara your moon has to be in that nakshatra degrees even if the ascendant is going to be close to those degrees vulnerable zone then also impact is going to be there but compared to the moon uh, uh, being placed over there ascendant is placed over there so the impact is going to be comparatively little bit less now guys uh, the next point is um, kranti samya so like there are like certain again what we are doing in this um, video is we are just looking at the sensitive juncture of the sun and the moon so uh, birth at a time when sun and moon declination are the same birth around the time of vernal equinox and autumnal uh, equinox or they like certain uh, yoga i mentioned this thing that uh, when we talk about the five limbs of the moon so yoga also becomes very important i would say this thing that the vyati path ati gand shul gand vyaghat vajra vishkam parig uh, vadhrati yogas if you are born or someone is born in these kind of yogas then it makes the life little bit prone and vulnerable towards fatalistic life now guys the next point is sarp shirsh um, alignment now this becomes very sensitive so for example if you are born or someone is born at a time when sun and moon they both are placed in the same or different uh, like third or fourth pada of the anuradha nakshatra this generally falls in the mark shish uh, amavas new moon if i'm not wrong so yes its results are considered as very malefic for the native now guys because there is a whole lot of logic to that because if sun and moon are going to be placed either in the same third or fourth pada or in different padas as well so uh, moon in any case because uh, anuradha falls in the uh, scorpio so moon is already debilitated it is very close to the new moon as well and there is a strong possibility that sun and moon are going to be debilitated in the uh, d9 as well so definitely if someone is born during these kind of alignments and trust me when you become a psychic when you start doing astrology professionally you will attract these kind of charts as well there are those people universe works in a very as per the perfect plan so you will come across those kind of charts as well so yes this makes the overall kundli weak now for example after knowing about this now if you do not give attention to this and you just look at the chart oh you have exalted saturn you have exa exalted jupiter you have this planet that planet but why results are not coming so because of this could be the reason now guys the next point is debilitated moon moon becomes very important so a debilitated moon which is not in the cancer or scorpio navmansh because obviously if moon is debilitated in the scorpio but it is in the scorpio navmansh it will become vargottam if it is in the cancer navmansh then also it becomes comparatively a little bit strong so if both of these two eligibilities are not getting fulfilled moon is debilitated that in itself makes overall structure foundation of the kundli of the chart little bit weak uh, next point is that uh, definitely guys if someone is born close to the time of the solar or lunar eclipse so again guys this makes the chart little bit karmic so if a kid is born around this time so kid is definitely going to be born with some uh, strong destiny strong prarabdh pending karma for sure now for good for bad for like something very uplifting or for doing something very uh, evil so all of that needs to be decoded from the chart but a birth at a time of the solar or lunar eclipse makes the chart little bit very karmic because rahu and ketu are now going to be the planet of surprises are going to be uh, you know controlling the rents of the life of the person uh, next point guys uh, yam ghant so this also becomes important because um, all what matters is that if um, over here we have to make a combination of the var like weekday and the nakshatra rising on that day at a time of the sunrise so um, if there is a combination of the sunday someone born on a sunday with magha nakshatra rising born on a monday vishakha nakshatra rising tuesday adra wednesday mula thursday kritika friday rohini saturday hasta that also makes the chart little bit weak uh, now guys when we talk about the gulika kal so yes um, see i do not want to get into the mathematical calculation a good software like cosmic insight 
एंड जगन्नाथ थोड़ा कैन डेफिनेटली गिव यू इन साइट ओवर देयर बट येस समन हु इज़ बॉर्न एट अ टाइम ऑफ दी योर बर्थ टू प्लेस वेन द गुलिका काल वॉज ऑन मेक्स द चार्ट लिटल बिट सेंसिटिव वनरेबल और तिथि शेयर सो दैट मीन्स दैट यू हैव लाइक द तिथि कॉट एक्सपायर्ड लैप्स बिफोर द नेक्स्ट सनराइज सो इट वॉज अ लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल चतुर्थी स्टार्टड आफ्टर द सनराइज and before the next sunrise it got finished so if someone is born so like the way tithi share that can be translated in english as the uh, collapse of the day collapse of the date so that in itself means that the life will also be in a diminished part a lot many times has been seen that um someone who is born in these kind of alignments irrespective of doing hard work the person never got the recognition so universe has a perfect plan that why you took birth in those alignments and again guys over here as well i want to make it very clear sometimes people do not understand astrology astrology is not about i want this can you help me can you help me reach there then only i will declare you or i will give you the award of a good astrologer it's not like that astrologer's job is to study your time very minutely and then advise you that okay this is what your time has Uh, capability to grant you and if only you will focus and align your energies in the same direction you will hit the bull's eye but if you are hard bent on doing things your way something which your chart something which your dasha is not promising then what an astrologer can do you will just end up getting duped and you will get nothing and there is no such thing as that you know i will place this planet vibration in your this house i will do this remedy and make things work for you or donate something very expensive wear the most expensive sapphire astrology does not happen like that so if you are working in the direction of promise of your chart running time period then you can increase the energy for the happening of the event but if something is not getting promised in the running time period then no one can do anything uh now guys when we talk about uh, another concept uh, shunya nakshatra so that simply means that um, if someone is born uh, on hindu specific months and uh, over there uh, on those specific nakshatra like you are born in the ashad month which as per the english calendar falls in the june july and in any of those uh, that uh, month you were born on a day when moon was in the pura falguni or your jan tara was dhanishtha in the ashad month so that is not considered as a very good combination after that guys next is the uh, one of the nav tara concept venashik nakshatra so venashik nakshatra simply means that 23rd nakshatra from your janam or moon tara uh, like even from the nav tara calculation tabular calculation that will happen to be your pratak tara uh, so which is not considered as very good so for example from your janma moon tara your ascendant your ascendant lord or important planets are placed in the venashik nakshatra then definitely so all what you have to do is that uh, wherever you will uh, whatsoever your moon tara is your janam moon uh, nakshatra is from there you will start doing the counting in the same sequence of 27 nakshatra and the nakshatra which is going to be the 23rd that is going to be a vulnerable zone for you and it becomes vulnerable if your important planets are placed over there now guys uh, definitely now this um, the point which i have already mentioned lot many times in my previous videos if um, when a child is born in the same moon nakshatra as of his parents or siblings uh, it lead towards disharmony um, and the native with weak planets suffer so for example if your uh your parents uh your parents have got like your father has got um hasta nakshatra your mother has got the purva shadha nakshatra and the child is born with the uh, hasta nakshatra or the uh, purva shadha nakshatra or the sister has got the rohini nakshatra and you are born with the same rohini nakshatra it is generally not considered as very good now who will suffer the person who is going to have weak planets is going to suffer now the next point is born in the same lagan so it is not as vulnerable as threatful as the same moon star could be moon nakshatra could be but even the lagna like for example uh, you might be born in the any of the date or month 
but if your lagan turned out to be the same as of your parents or real siblings so it is not considered as very good again guys when it comes down to marrying someone with that that is a different story altogether here i'm talking about someone who is born with affliction or with a weak chart that is decided on the basis of what are the lagan or moon nakshatra of your parents of your real siblings next is guys uh, trikhal yog so this is also very interesting so now i was in this impression that okay only in india uh, we have uh, like a uh, tradition of big families specifically if you go to the countryside but even living in uh, like uh, canada i had like certain native uh, uh, like indigenous uh, friends uh, within canada they like this girl from germany i was good friends with her she was my acting scene partner for lot many classes and yeah she also told me she had like six seven siblings and all so it is still valid because the author when i was reading this um, point it was mentioned over there oh it is not valid today's time because people are not having too many children and all but it is still valid uh, if you will take the whole world uh, as one uh, joint family big family so yeah so uh, three khalyu that means a son born after three sisters or a girl born after three brothers so in a family they already have three daughters the fourth child is born as a boy or a family who already has got three boys the fourth one turned out to be the girl so um, the third uh, like someone who is born after three of these um, uh, siblings of the same gender then the person might have to suffer with weak planets or something now this is what has been mentioned uh, next point is twins so how can we overlook that so in case of twins uh, their ascendant and moon nakshatra is generally the same like obviously we have to do the very very fine calculation and you will see the variation only in the shashti amsha chart d60 chart there are like lot many techniques which people come up with but the hard uh, thumb rule is that uh, in case of twins their ascendant and moon nakshatra is generally the same and stars of either one tend to remain weak so it has there has been a research over there that one of the uh, twin is going to have some sort of weakness in terms of the luck stars destiny or fortune uh, now guys uh, and the next point is the last point is birth in adhik mass and shay mass so it's a lunar calendar calculation so uh, adhik mass one additional month happens after every 3 years in certain can calculation and the shay mass uh, also happen in certain mathematical calculation so again any uh, uh, like shay mass generally happens when the sun transit to zodiac sign uh, within the same month so generally what happen is that these kind of like anything which is making the nature sensitive uh, eclipse uh, gandhant or uh, sankranti so any of these things when the nature is sensitive prakriti is in sensitive state and you are born right at that time you are coming to the world in that time the cosmos what happens above so happens below so some how it is going to be having a effect in your stars as well now that does not mean you are only going to suffer you could be doing something uh, exceptional in the world as well but everything is going to be controlled by some third power and the free will is going to be little bit weak so yes guys that is something which i wanted to say as a part of my inputs for for the more updates and notifications on the divine signs of vedic astrology please subscribe to my youtube channel and follow me on my instagram account dhanyawad